opening up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. Welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. And this week, we are talking with Marietta, Georgia's Iron Marker Brewing. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. Hey, Tim. How's it going? If you're a regular listener, you've heard of Ironmonger many times. They're a Beer Guys Radio partner, and our studios are inside their brewery. They've made some big changes recently, and we wanted to chat with them about what's coming up. Joining us today, we have Ironmonger's new head brewer, Sarah Green, and sales and operation manager, Ramsey Florence. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Sarah, we are currently sipping your Et Tu Juice. No, we're not sipping Et Tu Juice. Right? We're drinking not Charlie Work, aren't we? Yep. Can you yep. tell us about this beer? Yeah. So uh, Charlie Work is a uh, session IPA. Um, it's for all the brewers out there who just want to drink an easy drinking beer after their shift um, or the people who just want to be able to knock back a six pack without getting knocked back themselves. Right. Um, it's a... Got a complex malt bill. Um, got some, you know, your normal barley, but also some wheat and spout. Um, clocks in about 4.3% ABV. Uh, it's brewed with Eldorado, um, Atanum, and Azaka hops. Okay. So it's got a lot of floral, citrus, little earthy, woodsy notes to it. But, sure. you know, if you want to think about it, you can think about it. If you want to just drink it, you can just drink just, it. Just knock it It's back. a drinking you know? beer or a thinking beer, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, I've seen a few more breweries using spelt recently in the brews. I was about what, to ask that. Yeah. What characteristics does that add to a beer? Yeah. So um, I've used spelt at a um, number of recipes of mine at my past breweries as well. Um, something that I really enjoy, uh, it's actually an ancient grain, uh, ancient relative also of wheat. Um, so for me, it adds a little bit of nuttiness to your beers. It adds a little bit of a malty backbone that like you can really unearth in your in your beer. Okay. Um, just a little other note to it. A little, little depth, complexity, yeah. right? Some complexity. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to talking to you more about uh, what's going on here. Absolutely. So, Brian, as always, busy week, extra busy week this, sure. this yes. week, right? So we had Thanksgiving thrown Indeed. in the mix there. Yeah. And then we took a little trip uh, to keep up with our mission to visit every brewery in the state. We went down to LaGrange, Georgia. Again. Again. Yes, we had to go twice this year because another another place opened up. So yeah, we, we went down there. I wish they could have timed it better for us. So I know, just right? Just opened it up earlier when we were down. Or the later, first time. so or they later, missed the you know, cutoff yeah, there. Exactly. But so back down in Lagrange, uh, we stopped uh, in Hampton at Jailhouse Brewing. Yep. Went down to Wild Leap uh, Brew Company. Caught them brewing Alpha Abstraction Volume Four, which is their super popular beer here. They change up the hops profile each time. And uh, Beacon Brew Pub was pretty cool, man. Nice yeah, little it's a cool spot little there. Place. So good food too. I mean, I didn't know what to expect, but uh, right. yeah, that's they had some good eats there. Um, Hot stickers. We we made the mistake of eating on the way down. Down, so sure. we weren't yeah. that hungry, but we heard everything was good. We did try the pot stickers, though. So what was your favorite beer of the trip? Oh, boy. You know, I still think that the uh, the easy answer is the Alpha Abstractions, because I, yeah. I had three there while I was at the brewery, because you have to, and then they gave us a little preview of four. So See, I misunderstood you there. I thought you said you'd chug three of them at the brewery. You're talking about volume three. Yes, volume three, and Brian's I wanted like to knock I... back three while you weren't looking. Brian, right? I had three at the brewery because you have to. Because you so. have to have three, yeah. So what else did you get into this week, Brian? So, yeah, uh, I went to... A pontoon tasting panel, which had uh, four different beers, which is their standard in, in some various paired up bites, and uh, they had two collaborations on. So they have the uh, the goats on boats. I believe I got that right, not boats on goats, because uh, it is was, goats on boats. Scofflaw correct. was there at pontoon, so that would be the guys known for the goats on the pontoon with the boats. Yeah, so that was neat. If you say so, yeah, okay, pretty All neat, right. right? Yeah. Um, also had the uh, the wolf pack, which was a, a fun imperial stout that was like a four way collaboration with Gate City and Variant and. Who else? Oh, Sprayberry and, uh, you know, obviously Pontoon. So, okay. yeah, that was a good time. That was a good time. And uh, also got into a, uh, a little bit of a bottle share midweek, which I've realized as a somewhat responsible or irresponsible adult, that's probably something I shouldn't do too often, but it was a lot of fun. I drank okay. some really fun beers there. So, Sarah, anything interesting for you this week, or you just been brewing and working and taking care of business? Big thing for us. We finally got um, a technician coming down to fix our canning line. Okay. So something that should have been done months yeah. ago. Um, finally <laughs> finally getting it done now. Christmas came so, early. At least it's yeah. happened, right. <laughs> Not too early, though, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So, so okay. uh, yeah, really just focusing on getting our quality back up and getting the canning line problems all fixed and proper training. And 
good cans yeah. out there in the market, right? Yeah. 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 So the coolest yeah. part for us, I love this community because we could take our cans to someone else and use their DO meter to ensure that like the cans were of proper quality. Right. And it's just an awesome thing. And it's even better now that we can just walk literally down the warehouse and like check it ourselves. Yeah. This week we got a DO meter in. Yeah. That's it. Um, see, see how so excited that's, that's brewer <laughs> excited. She is almost exploding. Those are those with Christmas joy. presents yes. there. Yeah. That's why I was the last one to the table because yeah. it was so <laughs> we're playing with the DO yeah. meter, yeah. right? Bring DO on every beer. Yeah. Yeah, she was a kid shaking the present the night before Christmas. Yeah. Man, like, what is it? Check it what out. Is it? What is it? You know, Tim, I think it's time for Truck and Taps Beers of the Week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Well, Brian, as you may have guessed, we are going to be sipping some Iron Monger beers. Uh, we pre-gamed with a little Mr. Meeseeks, which is a reference to a Rick and Morty episode there, for those that don't know. I imagine a lot of people that listen to a craft beer show probably, probably know. know about Rick and Morty. So we did that. We are drinking the Not Charlie work right now that we just talked about. We do have some Et Tu Juicy, so we're going to discuss the proper way to pronounce that beer name a little yes, bit later. Yes, we are. And, uh, Brian, we had some cans. You brought some cans of the Pontoon, the pontoon Scofflaw Goats on Boats. I did. So we've been sipping on that. So it's going to be a good drinking day for sure. So, Brian, what is happening in this week's news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. All right. So the big news this week is, uh, well, I'm going to call it Trillium Gate. So Trillium has posted an update about their recent employee drama, and there's a lot in it. But in it, they state things like the tip-based wages that were complained about are basically the standard in the craft brewing industry, having come from restaurants and the way the bars operate. And their compensation practices adheres to the state and federal laws. So the vast majority of employees, when they asked, were very positive about the tip-based system because they actually get paid pretty well, at least the ones behind the bar. One of the complaints that started this off was the tenured retail staff getting paid less at Trillium's new Fort Point location and having to interview for their jobs in addition to that and uh, somehow calling that a promotion. Well, Trillium has corrected this and reinstated the employee's previous pay raise, so that's been corrected. But they haven't commented on other allegations, including brooding practices that might not be legal, like pouring spirits into a beer and allegations of selling less than optimal beers in, in the form of crowlers and other things like that. So there's still a fair amount of drama around it, and people are yeah, they're not too happy about it. You still. know, one thing, that, one thing that I have to wonder with the Internet, even the smallest problems get really amplified. Sure. And I, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if, uh, you know, I know one person posted something, and there were a couple others that came in and said, you know, they felt the same way or they kind of chimed in and said that. But we could have two or three upset employees there. Sure. And I'm not necessarily defending Trillium, just as it's really hard to tell exactly what happened when you're going off an Internet thread because once the Internet gets blood, oh, yeah. those sharks are all over it. They're circling. I mean, people are making memes, making fun of cutting wages yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. That it's is just, the classic. <laughs> if once, once you spill blood in the Internet – you're done for. The yeah. prawns, the sharks, and whatever is a, a bloodsucker is after you. Absolutely. And, and I wondered with the, uh, the, the the change in pay rates for tenured employees, if that was an, a voluntary shift that they made, like they applied for a new job at a new location, or if that was something that was forced on them. And that's yeah. never been clear to me. So. I'm sure there's a lot more to it, but you oh, know, I'm sure. we have to take it for what the internet has told us. So another big thing in the news this week, uh, it involves trademarks. And Omnipolo, and I never know how to say the name, if it's Omnipolo Pollo, or Pollo. Omnipollo. Is it an Uber Pollo. chicken? I don't know. La Jolla. But, uh, so they were hit with a cease and desist over their controversial and probably the best known beer that they do is the, the Yellow Bell beer there aren't a lot of details as of this moment but other than the the confirmation that the brewery is not brewing anymore after the next batch going out that's it um, there's unverified speculation that uh, yellow belly cider was the source of the cease and desist but again this hasn't been confirmed and i did find that there was at least one other place in ireland of all places that was also called yellow belly so it could have been them you know we don't know and brian i believe you did reach out to yellow belly cider but did not I receive did. A reply in time for this recording as of this recording yes no no response in fact i don't think they even read the message yet <laughs> okay well one day they will brian one day you listen to the beer guys radio show we do need to take a quick break but we'll be back very soon to talk with ironmonger brewing We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the Reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, 
Reformation creates yeast forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, or a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. Looking for a great way to promote your business? Cedar Stream has what you need. For apparel, stickers, signs, and banners, we're your one-stop shop. There are never any art fees or setup fees. And if you need your items quickly, there's no additional charge for rush orders. Whether you own a brewery, bar, bottle shop, or other business, Cedar Stream is ready to serve you. Visit cedarstream.com for more info or call 800-686-7488 for immediate assistance. Cedar Stream. We print America. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To be the man, you gotta beat the man. Woo! Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you miss an episode, don't worry. All episodes are available as a podcast. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting app and never miss a show. We're talking with Sarah and Ramsey from Ironmonger Brewing. Sarah Ramsey, thanks again for joining us. During the break, I showed you one of my magic skills, which is the inability to pour <laughs> from a crowler without it dribbling down the front of the can. So, If it makes you feel any better, Tim, my first few months here, I couldn't pour out of the draft correctly. See? I, I got an endless amount of just... Just foaming it up yeah. there? Okay, yeah, it, it does make me feel better. I appreciate you letting me know I that. I have a poor, poor game. So. A poor, poor game. <laughs> so, yeah, crowlers and I don't get along. So, And that's I told... I thought Sarah would make me feel better, you know, because she had a little bit, but she's like... Psst. I'm drinking crawlers. I'm drinking, I'm, drinking <laughs> right. from, I'm drinking from tanks and taps there. So straight to pro, man. That's it, man. Got to do it. <laughs> well, y'all, thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, you know, we've been fans and partners for a long time now, and uh, there's been big changes recently, and so that's why we wanted to have you guys sit down with us again and just kind of let everybody know. Just a little setup there. Um, recently, one of the partners in the head brewer left Ironmonger. Sarah, you joined the team as the head brewer. Uh, maintenance manager, packaging director, and all of that, correct? Yeah, yeah, just running everything yeah. back of house. Okay, and there's a lot, yeah. there's big plans. So you guys are basically taking this opportunity. There's been big changes here. You're going to continue to make big changes and kind of move forward with things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Well, we're going to talk about, we're going to get into details, Brian. Yeah. Details, that's what we're about here. We are about the details, so, yes. Sarah, one thing, I was uh, snooping uh, on the internet about Uh-oh. you, <laughs> seeing what was up there. And I take it that brewing wasn't your original career plan because you have a degree in anthropology. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I studied anthropology. I was going to save okay. the world. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, my initials, Sarah Green, SG. So uh-huh. uh, I was going to be Secretary General, Sarah Green of the UN, you know, SG. There you SG. go. Nice. Just, okay. You know, run world peace and... And, and so you finished that and decided to start brewing, right? Yes. The world has been saved. Now she's <laughs> saving the world, the world saved, one so beer at a time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah okay. So yeah. what kind of led you into the brewing world? Um, yeah, so I after college, uh, I started working at a law firm. Law was a potential career path. I really had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I just figured it was something international, something helping the world, because I love to travel, I love languages. Um, so I was like, maybe international law, or maybe I go into business, I don't know, nonprofit. Um, but got a job at a law firm, and after like two weeks, I was like... <laughs> This, this, this isn't is it, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But I had no idea what else I wanted to do. So um, I worked with some really great people at the law firm, though. Great two name partners were wonderful people. I worked a strict nine to five and never had to go on the weekend. So um, it was a good job with good people who supported me and they knew I didn't want to end my career at the law firm. Uh, so I just kind of stayed with it until I figured out what was next. Okay. Um, on the side, I started. Uh, working at Goose Island Clybourne. Uh, it's their brew pub in Lincoln Park, the original location. Um, I started hostessing there on nights and weekends. My best friend worked there. I was there all the time, um, just hanging out, paying for my beers. And it was like, maybe I should hang out and get free beers for Ooh, being here. A, there you go. That's <laughs> you know? a good idea. Gotta have the plan. Uh, yeah, yeah, getting paid. So I did host, started hostessing uh, after two, three months of that. I was like, this is absolutely horrible. Why would anyone want to do this? <laughs> you get abused by everybody. Servers, bartenders, customers, everyone. And you can't leave. You're the catch-all. You're, yeah, you're, the catch-all you're stuck. Right. And you can't walk away. Yeah. 
Uh, at the time, Goose Island Clybourne was separate from the production facility, uh, and it, the Clybourne location was also still owned by the, the original founder, John Hall, um, and that was also the only place where they did brewery tours. So if someone came into town and wanted to do a brewery tour for Goose Island, uh, they had to do it at the brew pub. So people would sign up for these brewery tours at Goose Island thinking they're going to see where Bourbon County happens, and then they'd end up at the pub. Um, but they were the only location that did brewery tours, Saturdays and Sundays, and then like for private events. So. Uh, I asked our manager, Reggie, if I could do brewery tours instead because I like talking to people. I like educating. It sounded like fun to drink beer and get drunk while getting paid. Uh, and he said, sure, talk to the brewers about training. So I pestered them for a couple months, trained, and started doing brewery tours and quit hostessing. And brewery tours led to a job at the marketing team at the Fulton location. I met some of them one day after doing brewery tours, and um, they said they were hiring. And I was like, well, why not? I don't like the law firm, so this sounds fun. Love beer. I would go home every day uh, and read my my beer books. Started with you know tasting beer, and then started my own you know off work time studying of beer and brewing and what was going on, so that I could be an educated tour guide for customers. That I could talk to home brewers about what we did and, and know what they asked, what they meant when they asked me. You know what's what's your efficiency and that yeah. kind of stuff. Cause, oh, it's good. Good, you know, yeah, good it's, efficiency. Yeah, right. it's, so, like, yeah. it's like Super 95%. Efficient. Right. You know? yeah. Super efficient <laughs> here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just fell in love with how vast the beer world is. You know, the anthropology is, was originally um, really fascinated by how beer kind of started civilizations and the whole history side of beer. And then uh, I started working on the marketing team as a brand ambassador with Goose Island, quit the law firm for a part-time marketing gig, Goose uh, Island, you know. Good just choice, took that, good choice, yeah. <laughs> took that leave of faith. Um, after a year of marketing, I was kind of bored of it, and at the same time, my studies had kind of shifted more towards how do you make beer and what actually happens um, when you're brewing and, you know, fermentation and all of that. So uh, I talked to Brett Porter, um, who at the time was the brewmaster of Goose Island. Now he's, right. I think, brewmaster of all AB mm. craft breweries something like that. So I talked to him about possibly doing an internship with the brewers. Um, and he was like, hey, you want to go full time? I was like, no. No, no <laughs> not I, yet. Calm down. Yeah, I calm was like, down. hey, if I don't like it, I don't want to screw you guys over. Uh, but if I do like it, you know, we can talk mm -hmm. then. So in August, about a year after I started the marketing, quit the law firm and switched over to marketing, uh, I started my brewing internship. And, you know, it was mid-August, which is the hottest time in Chicago wearing my jeans and my Hunter rain boots because I didn't know what else right. to wear. Uh, and I was working on Bourbon County, extracting barrels, uh, and I fell in love. And Not a bad place to it. start out your brewing <laughs> yeah. journey. From yeah. hostess to head brewer. That's, that can be yeah. the title of your book when you're yeah. right. So. <laughs> yeah. I fully <laughs> expected somewhere in there we were going to hear about some home brewing. Did you do any of that, or did you just go right to professional brewing, basically? Nope. That's uh, why we call her LeBron around here. She's LeBron, straight to pro. Straight, straight to, to pro. pro. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, I never homebrewed. I studied, um, but I, I did not homebrew myself. Okay. Um, I've always lived in tiny apartments. Not conducive. Gotcha. <laughs> so what's the smallest batch of beer you've ever personally brewed? Well, so I have homebrewed since then. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. just not since, initially. Since right? I went pro, I have homebrewed. <laughs> most <laughs> most of the time, but... it's the opposite. You homebrew a lot, and then once you start pro brewing, you're like, "Well, I'm done with that stuff at home. I got to do it all day." So you started doing it after going pro for like test batches. Okay. You now, um, I I don't homebrew consistently now, but I have done it a few times. Or um, you know, we had a sap coat Monday night, so I've done right. 15 gallon batches um, homebrew there to test out a recipe every now and then. But but I can count on one hand how many times I've brewed less than five barrels at a time. Now, you mentioned Monday right. night. So after Goose Island coming down to yeah. Atlanta, you you work with Sweetwater for a while, right? And then over at Monday night, just prior to coming here to Ironmonger, correct? Yeah. yeah. Quite a journey there. So what, what would you say your brewing philosophy is? Do you have a kind of a codified philosophy of your approach to brewing? You know, I like to brew beer that tastes like beer. You know, if I'm brewing beer that has fruit in it, it's not going to taste like a fruit smoothie. We know? actually so. lodged a complaint about the latest batch of billet, yeah. and we were yeah. told to stuff it, basically. They said, yeah. no, hey. that's not the way Sarah wants it. And <laughs> for those that don't know, the billet was one that was very, very heavy blood orange. Very, very uh, heavy sugar. Heavy sugar. Yeah, so that my predecessor brewed with that. 
And there's a story behind that. Yeah. That was more um, the predecessor decided to make a boatload of the Pilsner, more than I could ever sell in like six months. So doing some brainstorming, I was like, what do people like? They like blood orange. Well, we're going <laughs> to. I do like blood orange. Yeah. Yes, and we're, and we're like, correct. we're going to make blood orange on steroids in this Pilsner. Okay. And that was the decision yeah. like prior. So it was to right. essentially make something that we could use and resell given what was going on at the I time. I fell for it. It, wor- it worked on me. It was a success, I thought. Yes. Except I mean, yeah. it was sugar, 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 sugar. Orange natural flavor. And then hops. Uh, two, oh. two hops, no. right? So the blood orange flavoring was a sugar syrup. Sugar based syrup. So, oh, I guess. So he was sugar. making a shandy or a soda, yeah. not, yes, it did. not a blood orange beer. It was right. A, yeah. And, and I'll so. say this we've talked about this before, and sure. there's, there's some that are very sweet like that that I enjoy the taste of, but right. you know, there's a lot of the milkshake stuff that they're doing right now. It may have a nice flavor to it, but you'd be hard pressed to find an IPA hiding under some of those. Well, we're going to talk more in just a minute about what you're brewing up here. You're listening to Beer Guys Radio Show. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back soon with more from Ironmonger Brewing. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing. Establishing a new standard in craft beer. It's Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout-out to one of our great radio affiliates, WEKI on 1490 AM and 94.7 FM in Decatur, Alabama. Catch Beer Guys Radio on WEKI every Saturday at 1 p.m. Central. We're talking with Sarah Green and Ramsey Florence from Ironmonger Brewing. Sarah Ramsey, we have a crowler that we talked about earlier of your Et Tu Juicius, and we had a, a little bit of discussion off air about the way to pronounce this. So, Sarah, since this is your beer, how should Et Tu Juicius be enunciated? Or is this more a Ramsey thing? This is a Ramsey Ramsey, thing. Ramsey tell it, us about it. It is Latin, so... Yeah, so okay. obviously, the Julius Caesar's reference, and then just wanting that emphasis of like the power behind it. And then the concept behind it for me was kind of poking fun at how everyone with these New England double IPAs is trying to make something as juicy as possible and kind of just joking that it's a betrayal of taste buds. But yeah, I view it as a yelling, but as you guys pointed out, it's more of a theatrical like Right. You believe when he was, when he got juked that he probably exclaimed it loudly, right? Yeah. Because I was thinking it would be more of an exasperated, disappointed. He's not on Wikipedia yet, so you got to wait a little while. Oh, soon. Yeah, I'll yeah, check soon, him out yeah. then. All right. Well, so we're a... drinking this. So, Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about this beer? Yeah. So uh, it's two-row, some Munich white wheat flaked oats. It's a pretty simple malt bill, full-bodied, um, juicy beer. It's our hazy house yeast to give it that really nice opaqueness. Cascade in the boil, and then Comet, Eureka, and Cashmere hops in this. So to give it a really well-rounded, dank, but a little bit of chopped fruit notes, um, a little bit of cattiness as well. It's New England style, but for me, it's not fully New England style because it's not overly sweet. It is still a little bit balanced. There's a little bit of that hot bite to it um, right. to, to balance out with the higher finishing gravity. The solid New England, it's more on the tropical fruits, and there is some citrus tones in this, you know, a little bitterness, a little citrus. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, not not full blown New England there. There right? is a nice yeah. softness to it, which there I assume is, comes sure. from the flake oats, right? There's yeah. that that softness with the haze. I'm like, it's it ha- does have quality New England IPA characteristics. characteristics. Yes. Sure enough. Well, speaking of balance, Sarah, we yeah. talked a little bit before we went to break there 
about some of the changes. We talked about the billet and the changes you made and your philosophy on brewing and that. Uh, it sounds like you got a lot of changes planned for the brewing side of things, correct? Yeah, I mean, everything's changed from day one. Actually, from my interview, everything's uh, kind of changed. So there are some names of beers that have stuck around, but the recipes behind them have completely changed. So Damascus, Forge, Steam Breather, all those recipes have changed, but they're old beers that have been around for a while. Um, and then we're also introducing some new beers and beer names. Uh, and eventually the old names will kind of slowly fade to the background and we'll come up with new names as well. Um, but as a whole, we're just trying to get away from the iron monger, metallurgy, iron worker names for the beers and then also on the labels as well. They're just, it's dark, it's heavy, it doesn't stand out. Um, so we're, we're changing, we're shifting the entire brand of the brewery to be a little more fun, a little more lighthearted. Um, the beer names that we're coming up with, a lot of them are you know, pop culture references to TV yes. shows that we love. Not Charlie Work, Mr. Yes. Me Seeks, that yeah. kind of stuff. Goodbye right. Toby's coming out. It's going to be a stout that we're doing, Office, kind of reflecting our, our own you know, personalities where we're a little playful, we're super sarcastic. Can you work some <laughs> Futurama references in yes, there? Yes, absolutely. I'm a big, I'm a big yeah, fan. Absolutely. Yes, so. we okay. can, good deal. There's a lot of shows on in that the works. list. Yeah. Yes, excellent. Oh, I expect the beer called Blackjack and Hookers very soon. Uh, yes. Soon, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, that'll get I'll make asked. my own beer. <laughs> <laughs> that'll come out the same day we do the yeah. Spinal Tap Black album. I was curious in listening to that, obviously the, the changes are coming about as a result of a differing philosophy on making beer. Does the uh, differences in pricing, shortages of hops and malts and various things like that, has that affected some of those changes? Is that figuring in? To why some of the existing beers are changing their profile or is it mostly just hey we're doing this differently uh, it's mostly just we're doing things differently okay um we are dropping anvil because of the price of citra citra was the main hop in that and we, we're not contract hopping contract hops right now yes we we actually we talked to another brewer recently that was talking about just how ridiculously that it was just uh, uh skyrocketing uh, and he, he mentioned, I forget the name of the site, but there's like a hop exchange. Yeah. And he said he was having to get a lot of his from there. It, it jumped. So the last batch of Anvil Sarah made, uh, Citra was at like 15 a pound. And the last we looked, it was like 25. And it's like, yeah. if you look at that yeah. sort of difference. In it's the insane. Use, yeah. But for the most part, the, all the changes are just reflective of my brewing philosophy. And also coming from all professional breweries, I understand what it takes to scale up a beer and to brew it consistently over and over and over again. So the changes are, are with quality and consistency in mind um, and repeatability. I think we got a low key diss in there. No, that, no, that no, no, uh, no, it's, uh... <laughs> it's, a, it's not a low key diss. Um, home, home brewing is fantastic. It's just- um, if Double you... low key diss. <laughs> <laughs> no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have breweries if it wasn't for home brewers. Sure. You know? Absolutely. It's, That's a good yeah. name for a beer, Low Key Diss. Low key, it is. It hasn't yeah, been done low yet. Key diss I don't is, think. Is, Maybe is it has. No, it's not a, a diss at all. Um, it's more just about the fact that this brewery was kind of band-aided together. It was duct tape and band-aid. So now going forward, it's just we're making decisions based on the fact of can we do it again? Can we do it over again? Can we do it the same way? And right. With it being consistent and high quality sure. product every time, which is it, which is what you do when you brew beer yeah, on a do. production right. level. Sure. Um, so like she referenced at the interview, a long part of what she and I talked when I was interviewing her was reviewing what had happened with us and just being brutally honest between the two of us of like, just we've had some issues. And it's like anyone here will admit that in the same way we understand that it just hasn't been what it could have been and like and accepting that and taking a step back and being humbling by not succeeding in the way we could have it's kind of reorganized the way especially she and i now are looking at what we need to do and it's this approach of well, if you were here every day you think we're crazy the amount we're pulling stuff out of the brights and just having conversations and just trying to ensure that we're back on that track of where it needs to be for what's happening here right and ramsey that's what we talked about and i know you've been open and honest we've known you guys since the doors opened here and uh, you know i I think this is Iron Marker's third appearance on the show mm -hmm. with different head brewers each time, you know, in, in a couple yes, of years' time. Yeah, so, actually. honest question for you here. What's going to be different going forward with Iron Marker? What should people expect going forward? Uh, so, the m model for us has changed a little bit. It's, I feel like before, so in the last year, it was a very focus of just trying to get that brand out and do it. And to me now, it's wanting to show a little bit of everything in what we're doing. And it's also that honesty of accepting if, I mean, in the last two months with Sarah and I, we've dumped a decent amount of beer, which sucks, but that's accepting that sometimes the equipment doesn't do what we want it to do and then understanding that 
it's that's a, a change of pace. Curve. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or being humbled by canning's difficult. Like I think that's the hardest thing being on this side of the fence now of like that thing's a beast in the back. There are great days and there are awful days. There are days to where I just want to go home and all I need is a stiff bourbon to like it was just god awful. Not a beer. Back. He's like, I don't want yeah. a beer. I yeah. don't want any beer. Yeah, it, it's a bourbon only. It's just, we've had days <laughs> where, you know, you had a fifteen barrel batch and we only got fifteen cases out of it. Just in a, and this is before she arrived, but in that period of just that's abysmal. A lot of beer and a lot of money yeah. going down yes, the drain there, right? Yeah. But that's that's what you have to do if you want to make a quality beer. So like we're willing to dump the bad batches. We're willing to you know, buy back the, the cans that we find out are oxidized in market after the fact because we didn't have our DO meter, but we have it now. Now we so have it that's now. A, yeah. Still yeah. excited about that. Still, Still excited. excited. So that was a yeah. big thing. A lot of what we did that wasn't good, we actually bought back from the distributor. And then I went on my, uh, what I've called like a multi-month apology tour to where I was going to on-premise and off-premise and buying back stuff as I could and doing the right thing to ensure that the quality that was not where it should have been, now it's at where it needs to be. Yeah. And it... That just yeah. goes back again. She and I probably talk more about quality than anything else. And frankly, like, we're not going to try and pull some BS like a Trillium challenge. Like, we're going to let our beers speak for themselves. We're not going to have to try and convince people and and pay them money or give them Trillium for free to try our beers. Like, we just want you to enjoy our beer for what it is. Uh, again, having had some time now on, like, this side of the fence, like, comparing, just it gets weird to me. It's a subjective thing to where it's hard to rate it. Like being exposed to so that. much beer sure. now, it's like I just accept that what we do is what we do. I understood what was done before, but in also ways it set up failure immediately because you set such a high standard mm-hmm. that we didn't continue to achieve that. That that's what caused problems. You've got you have to be able to consistently back that. Definitely. If you're going to do something like that, if you're going to if you do go out and you say try us, we're better yeah. than the ones you guys think is the absolute best, then you do have to be able to do that yeah. every single time out there. Sure. I mean, we drink a lot of other people's beers, but that's just a all right. This is where we need to be. This is the path we're headed on. I'm optimistic in terms of what we're doing and what's going on, and like being realistic of what we're able to achieve now, and like where potentially we could be if we do the right things. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're taking a break, and we'll be back right after this. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing. Establishing a new standard in craft beer. Are you thinking about opening a brewery in the Atlanta area? If so, take a look at the park at Georgetown. This unique community will feature a collection of restaurants as well as a craft brewery within the new JW Homes luxury development, Dunwoody Green. Conveniently located less than half a mile from I-285, this enclave of restaurants will be the gathering place in Dunwoody. Krim and Associates, the developer of the park at Georgetown, wants to talk to you. For more information, call Todd Semrau at 404 404- 4226-6526. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Shake it, bite! Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash beerguys. Patrons can get some cool perks like Beer Guys swag and commercial-free episodes. Now back to our conversation with Sarah and Ramsey from Ironmonger Brewing. Sarah, we just poured some of your Mr. Meeseeks, and can you tell us about this beer? Yeah, so it's a smoked porter with paprika and molasses. Um, You're not going to get too much molasses flavor because it's fermented out, Uh, but just a hint of paprika, not overwhelming, and a hint of smoke so that it's easy drinking and tasty and a light-bodied classic Dark beer. Porter with a little flair to it, right? Yeah. Good just stuff. Flair. Always going to show you flair. Yeah. You do got to show your flair. <laughs> I've Absolutely. always wondered with, with molasses, putting it in beer, what you're contributing to a beer if it's going to ferment out. I mean, I guess there's some like richness just to it, right? Yeah. Fun. Fun? Okay. Fun. Something. something I'll accept that man. as an answer. It's That's, flair. The flair. It's flair. <laughs> 47 pieces. Barrel program and sour program. So you guys have a very nice barrel room here. And we'll talk more about the physical of the brewery in just a minute, Ramsey, but uh, the barrel room. So you're going to get, Sarah, is there going to be a barrel program, a sour program in that going forward? 
there is one day when we have time. Okay, I was going to say, they're like, yeah. So, no, okay. Um, I mean, I got my start working on the barrels at Goose Island. Right. Um, bourbon barrels, Bourbon County, and then, you know, wine barrels with the whole sour program. Um, so, you know, Goose Island, you start off in the barrel program. You don't work mm-hmm. your way into it. You start off and make sure that you can uh, you can hack it. So we're um, actually picking up five barrels from Heaven Hill that Jason and Orpheus picked up for us that we're super excited about. Okay. Yeah. And when are we going to play with that? I've seen Jason make that offer several times when he runs yeah. up to get yeah. barrels. He's always like, hey, I got some more room in the truck. You know, yeah. does someone need some barrels? Again, just another very amazing thing in this community of, like, looking out for each other. It's right. awesome when you get those random emails at, like, 11 o'clock at night of, like, oh, I don't mind if I do. I you want some barrels? Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. So, Sarah, once that gets running, are we going to see CCBS over here or CBCS? You'll see SG Cobb County Bourbon Barrel Okay, Age. there we go. <laughs> S- Ironmonger's S- C- 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 yeah. yeah, Looking we'll, forward to it. We'll have some fun. Actually, our first project hopefully will be brewed this week or next week. It'll come out probably in a year. Um, it's going to be a Sherlock reference, Mind Palace. Okay. Have you seen the new oh, yes. BBC? Yep. Yeah. I'm a big um, fan of that. Yeah. Good yeah. Call. And if it turns out, obviously it hasn't been brewed yet. So just theoretically, it's going to be an amazing beer. Um, but it'll be <laughs> um, kind of a Belgian yeast strain fermented in stainless and then secondary on pineapples with Brett C in wood. Ooh. So I think it'll hopefully it turns out really well. If not, then okay. this conversation never happened. So I like that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> delete it from yeah. the Internet. Uh, so. The Mind Palace is incredibly complex and i view a sour that way to do it correctly it's like there's so much going into it so many nuances it just it seemed like the perfect name so we'll see Hopefully, okay hope it lives now up. i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little throwback here so pentatonics <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about lamics lamic lamic that's Lamex. right Lamex. Yeah. so that's a beer guys radio throwback reference that is, please listen yeah. to the previous iron monger episode <laughs> yeah we currently have uh, like what 20 barrels of pentatonic that we're dumping okay. You do, okay, um, getting dumped then, right? All right? Yeah, the funny thing about Lambics is that you can't do a cool ship in the middle of summer next to a highway. <laughs> really? Okay. That's, that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you I can, know, appa- you can <laughs> apparently, Sarah. So you can. I think I drank that. Should I be concerned? Yes. Do I need to you see know a what? <laughs> I was about to say, though, I enjoyed Pentatonics. I did, too, I actually. remember trying Because that. you don't have your receipt, you cannot hold a slide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, yes. I, so all the Pentatonic okay. I've had was uh, just pure acid aldehyde, pure okay. apple. So, oh. uh, And, you know, usually that's a stage in your mixed firm beers, but yeah. this is not it's a, hanging a on, stage huh? that I want to see to fruition. Okay. Uh, based on my knowledge of how it started. There you go. So, I mean, that's been part of our process of identifying where we were and then moving forward in a different direction. Um, I know the predecessor and I, like Sarah, we would argue a lot about using Brettomyces. He wasn't too keen on it, but that's something I really dig with Sarah. Of Like, we're going to breath the hell out of everything, for lack of a better term, when it comes to it. Get on it. Brett, see it. You know, it, and, and I, I love that uh, Heaven Hill Barrels will be involved. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what it is about beer that goes into those, but I've I always enjoy the results, and I don't know if it's just a bias on my part, you know, l- liking Heaven Hill or what. But you know, speaking of moving forward, I think we have to address this. What's the story with Naughty Soda? It's a great question. Yeah. So initially, the two founders, which were uh, Larry Green and David Sheets, wanted to create this particular product where they had a vision in mind. They set out to do it, and in the process of whenever you go commercial with brewing, like you hit hiccups. And just, I think, those difficulties, they never figured out how to solve with it, to be honest. And in doing that, it created problems. And in a three-tier state, like, if you mess up enough, your distributor can hold you hostage. Sure. And regretfully here, that's one of the things that happened. And out of that was born Ironmonger. Uh, And what originally was a focus of Naughty Soda, that got phased out about six months ago, actually. So part of when I was on board here, my uh, biggest thing I was yelling and screaming about at the top of my lungs was focusing on just one brand. And Does Naughty it, Soda was actually alcoholic sodas. Yeah, it was. Well, we te- had technically, cinnamon red hot. We, well, they were it's soda technically with an beer. Yeah, yeah. It's technically okay. it was a base beer. And then All natural right. additives were in, introduced to it at different points in the production process. What happened from that, it allowed them to kind of channel whatever they wanted to do with what was going on. Depending on who you asked here, when the tap room was open, it was either highly praised or it got some mixed reviews. Uh, what I saw once I was on board was that the beer was selling more. In particular for us, like in the very beginning of what I saw when I was here was Anvil Crucible. We're doing upwards of like 70, 80% of the sales each week out of the tap room. Because I know uh, originally yeah. I, I was told when I asked about 
Ironmonger and the relationship to Naughty Soda that Ironmonger was kind of launched strictly for people who came to Naughty Soda but had someone with them that didn't want a hard that wanted a beer. So there would be a couple taps of that there, and then you know it kind of seemed over to time, evolve they from there until they just took, yeah. it, took it over there. I mean, in the last six months, it was around. So that was uh, January to about July. Uh, Naughty Soda was actually only seven percent of total tap room sales. Okay. So when you started looking at what was going on. It didn't make no sense to continue to try on to do it. It also, given what happened with our initial beers that were very successful, which was like Anvil and Damascus, from what limited production we had before the expansion that started in May, there just wasn't room to do it either. Uh, and the hardest part, never having a pilot system, is like you're going to make 15 barrels of a base beer. That's a lot of beer to keep for a tap room. And for us being yeah. smaller, that's a lot of inventory to work through. So it's just, again, from being logical, it kind of worked itself out from seeing what was going on in the market and seeing what was working of like beginning to pursue that. I mean, for us right now, there's no goal to do anything but beer. We're going to do a lot of different types of beer, and we're excited about what we're doing now in terms of providing options each month we're doing a lot of one-offs each month which is super exciting for us so for those naughty, that have been asking on the internet and in person and that there's your answer naughty soda is no more is no more yes well ramsey we want to talk some about the physical changes yeah. here at iron monger and uh, you're planning a very uh robust uh, aggressive renovation is correct yeah that's correct i mean our vision has become what sarah's doing with beer what's going on with the labels the branding Everything needs to be in sync to where it's like it just matches what's going on. I think to be candid, how it was originally set up here more reflected that original brand of Naughty Soda versus Ironmonger. And I think we have that chance now to kind of adjust it, upgrade, and make what could be a very pleasing experience for any person that comes in here and drink beer. It's kind of scattered right now, to be honest, and I know that can be a downside for what's going on. But the goal is to create more of an open concept and allow people that can come in, drink, and do the things we want to do. We're about to invest a lot of money in it. We're about to redo the barrel room as well and then kind of make it to where you just kind of walk in and you're going, holy crap, this looks awesome. I want to hang out here. So you you walk out after visiting a tap room and you, you forget that you're in an office park, that you're in an industrial area. Right. So the tap room will continue to function in much the same way it, it does currently, but it's going to be redesigned or is it going to change and function uh, so as well? So where the bar is now will be no more. That's just production. That'll okay. become completely Sarah's domain, which she's super psyched about. Knock down um, those walls. And then the main bar that's out front where you guys have done photos and other stuff, that's going to become the main tap area. And then one of the biggest things is the whole barrel room is going to be open concept. So that when you walk in from that door, you can see everything to the very back wall of like the building. And you know, another thing that I think is pretty big news, and maybe the biggest news we've talked about all day, <laughs> is I heard that you've actually partnered with a craft beer radio show, and they're building a studio inside of your brewery. Yeah, what? I'm pretty excited about yeah, that. Right. Crazy. <laughs> so for those that don't know, we have been a partner of uh, Iron Marker Brewing. We, they've been a sponsor. We've been partners for a long time. When we found ourselves kicked out on our tails, Brian, they yes. took us in. So we were Gypsy Radio for a while. We've been uh, utilizing their space for a while as a studio, but we've decided to take our relationship to the next level. The next level. So we've made it official. We actually will be building a permanent home here inside Iron Monger Brewing. We're I cannot have wait to argue about Netflix with you. How about it, man? We're going to do it, man. Are these your socks? Why'd you leave them on the floor? <laughs> we are so. going to need at least two TiVos. That's all I'm yeah. saying. We all thank you so much for joining us. We've thank really had a great us. conversation. Best of luck going forward and uh, making those changes and moving forward, Sarah. We appreciate you taking time to talk with us here. So everyone, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You guys are out there on Untapped as well. So, and see about the changes coming up. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Please tune in next week as our guest will be Coastal Empire Brewing. We're taking a trip to Savannah, Georgia, doing our road trip down road there. Road trip. Yeah, for more, more great craft beer info, follow us online. We are Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you missed a show, we're available on all popular podcasting apps. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers. The Beer Guys Radio Show on the Beer Guys Radio Network. BeerGuysRadio.com. 